Hello YouTube, this is Noah and today I'm going to be doing a unboxing and review of the Thrustmaster TH-8A shifter. And I can barely fit it in the frame right now, so I might as well show you what's in the packaging so I can take it out and actually fit it in the frame. So, we're just going to take a look around the box here really quick so you can see, or try to see I guess, some of the specifications that are printed on the box. Feel free to pause the video and read it over because I will make this video way too long if I read off every fact that is printed on the box here, so feel free to just read it yourself. Alright. And then that's going to be about it for the box. Let's cut this puppy open. Now that it is out of the box, uh, I am going to be showing you everything that's inside. And it's like you got the standard manual right here. And that bag does not let it slip out. And this is a real manual. I haven't seen one of these in a while. This has got quite a lot of pages. And. I retract my previous statement because most of these pages look like they are just in a different language. So the actual part that takes place in English appears to be this portion right here. The rest, another language. So I guess it's good that they have a lot of different languages that this is translated to. Um, not convenient for me considering I only speak English. So first piece I take out here is going to be the shift knob itself. And that is a lot bigger than I expected. I can take the measurement for you. It's going to be about 49 millimeters in diameter, in diameter. And yeah, that's uh, a lot bigger than I expected, honestly. Um, I will be taking the weight of everything once I get it out of the box here. It comes with an Allen wrench and some screws right here. I wonder what those are for. It might be for the base plate, actually. Because this thing does come with two different plates. So you can shift two different ways. First way is the standard H pattern, which is already mounted on here, which is why I took this out first. So this is the sequential pattern. And basically what this means is when you shift, you're either shifting up or shifting down. There's no actual gear selection itself for the gearbox. Alright, and then I think there's one more piece here, it's a cord, and then two cords. So it looks like a, I have no idea what kind of connection that is. Um, not sure what kind of connection this is, the circular connection here. But one of them goes to USB, and one of them goes to, looks like PS2 for a computer. I think this is some kind of weird fancy connection that's specifically for the shifter, uh, but I've never personally seen that before in anything else. Let's take this out of here, and yep, there's the connection for the shifter, or the cable we just saw. And let's take this behemoth out of here. This thing's a lot bigger and quite heftier than I expected, honestly. Wow, that is quite a weight to it. I'm curious to see if my scale's going to be able to read it. Because <laughs> I'd say that's at least five pounds, feels like it to me. And then, wow, that is... Very nice shifting. If you weren't aware, this shifter does use something called HART technology, which stands for Hall Effect Accurate Technology, and it essentially ensures that your your um, the switch, the shift, I mean, that takes place, when you move it into different gears, the shift takes place magnetically, meaning that no switch, there's no like physical friction between any switches. The It records it magnetically and ensures that the switch does not degrade over time. So this would um, seriously improve the longevity of the product. So let me clear off all of the unimportant stuff from the desk here. All right, so we got the shift base and the shift knob, which I'm gonna screw on really quick. Quite a lot of screwing. Um, you have the sequential shift plate, which is made out of plastic. And that looks like I guess these are just two extra screws because there's no there's no 
There's only four screws on this thing total, so I'm guessing they're just two if you strip them or lose them for some reason. But what you would essentially do is you'd unscrew all of these, and you can take this aluminum plate off and put on this plastic sequential plate, and that way you, it will um, shift sequentially, and then it'll, the little springs in there will force it back to the middle. So you will always be either shifting up or down. The way it's configured now with the H pattern is so it goes into first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and reverse. And I'm not very good at doing it while I'm holding it, but <laughs> there's that. Um, this right here is the part that screws onto your desk, and that looks very high quality. All right, that took a really, really long time. <laughs> These threads are really small, so it takes forever to unscrew it all the way. I'd highly recommend not screwing it all the way back when you're done with it, because it will take forever to screw it back in. But it's got a nice foam padding right here, and on the bottom of this part here, and so it shouldn't cause any damage to your desk. And then the cable itself here, I will not be using the PS2 cable, so I can set that aside, because I do not even have a PS2 port on my computer. So after I unwrap this cable here, I'll show you how to put that on. So here's the cable here, and then we'll screw it down. It doesn't look like there's any particular way you need to put it in here, because all these pins look like they could fit. It look, actually, there's two pins in the middle, so it looks like the, it can either be plugged in like that or upside down. But it doesn't look like there's much room for air. I stand corrected. There's only one way to plug it in. There's a little groove up here. Um, it's kind of hard to see the focus, but there's a groove up here, and that groove lines up with a groove on the shifter. There we go. And then there's a little uh, collar ring here that screws it down and ensures that they're firmly connected. So I will not be installing the sequential shifter today just because that's very time consuming and I don't personally want to use sequential shifting anyways, I like the H pattern better. But I will show you, um, it's essentially just unscrewing these four screws here and um, taking the plate off itself. Just make sure you have the knob off too because otherwise this, this can't come off. And then this just slides right over the shaft and screws back in where this one would have been and then you will be able to shift sequentially. One, um, the other thing that's cool about this model is you can unscrew these, but not, or sorry, not unscrew them, but loosen them, and then you will be able to like sh turn this plate itself. And so you can like configure the H pattern or sequential pattern so that it's comfortable you, for you to shift with without like, you know, taking the entire plate off. It's able to move like 360 degrees without actually you know, repositioning the entire shifter itself. That way you can kind of position it so that the H pattern is comfortable for you to shift with and so that it's not like being a burden to um, have to like unscrew it and shift the entire uh, thing itself. So really quick, I'm gonna take the measurements and that'll conclude the unboxing portion, purport, portion of this video. And then I will be on to the demonstration portion once I get more comfortable with how to use it. So the shaft, it's going to be about 11 millimeters. The actual base is pretty big here. And I actually can't get my caliper. almost can't get my caliper on it. So it looks like it's more than six inches because I can't get my caliper all the way around it. So it looks to be about a 125 millimeters, the base itself, and the actual distance that you're able to put on your desk 
unscrew it even more, is going to be about fifty-five-ish millimeters. So that's about it for the re for the unboxing portion of this video. I will play around with it, and I will show you a more in-depth look at it in the software and playing around with it later. All right, YouTube. Today we're going to be doing a. Um, I'm going to be handling the shifter myself, and this is this is a little weird for me. I've never really done a video like this before. I have my audio recording with the microphone right here, and the video is going to be recorded from the GoPro. It's the only way I could think to get the shifter and the car in the same shot, aside from doing two different shots. And I feel like this will be easier to coordinate. So I'm going to talk about the shifter really quickly. It is a very, very quality shifter and it feels really nice to use. And this game right here is Project Cars 1, before you ask. And I'm not the best in the game, so ignore... Okay. Ignore if I am uh, doing a little bad. And I haven't played this in a little while, so it's going to take a little bit to get used to. Sorry, I upshifted with the uh, paddles before. Didn't mean to do that. It's a force of habit. So, I'm going to try as best as I can not to crash and kind of demonstrate how nice the shifter is to use. This is the uh, Norschleif Germany. It's personally my favorite course to run in this game just because of the difficulty and the turns. There's a lot of turns you can attempt to drift on in this course. Probably not intentionally supposed to drift on, but I like to have fun doing some drifting on this course. As if you can see in the frame right here, the shifter is handling very nicely. It feels like a quality shifter. Like honestly, this is just very well built. And props to Thrustmaster. I'm really glad I didn't buy the Logitech shifter because that one looks way more plasticky than this one and this one is almost entirely made of metal. All of the parts that you see on the outside are metal except for this uh, plastic right there. The rest of it is metal. So it's just, it's just a pleasure to work with. Like I said, I'm not the best at this game, so don't criticize me in the comments. I already know how bad I am. <laughs> if I take breaks from this game, I get really, really bad at it as well. So I'm going to try not to crash here, but ignore any um, kind of slips and spills I have along the way. I'm um, sorry if this uh, my racing wheel is kind of jostling the mic a little bit. I've never, like I said, I've never done a video like this before, so I don't know how much the uh, audio is being impacted by my racing here. I assume it can hear it, but I won't really know until I edit. I hope that I have all of the uh, stuff in frame here because it was a little hard to set this up. Well, I absolutely love racing with this uh, shifter. It's I, I used to use the paddle shifters on this Logitech racing wheel. By the way, I've done a video on this racing wheel if you're curious to see it. Oops. And I didn't mean to do that. And I stall here. Sorry about that. <laughs> I shifted too far down. All right. Now yeah, we're back on track. So I did do a video about this Logitech wheel. Oh, come on. And uh, you can go see that on my channel if you're curious about it. The other thing that I love about the shifter, as opposed to the paddles that I was previously using, is that the shifter um, making switching from whatever gear you're on to reverse is very easily done with the shifter. And that was one of the, my biggest pet peeves with the uh, paddle shifters on my uh, Logitech wheel, was that... Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> the biggest uh, pet peeve I had on the Logitech shifter was that the um, switching from whatever gear you're on to reverse 
can take a really long time. Like if you if you're in fifth gear and then you crash and spin out, switching down to reverse takes forever because you got to go down six clicks, and it's not like immediately clicking. It's uh, it takes a second for the transmission to change gears in the game. And the other thing is, I hope to buy Project Cars too. This is only the first one. Uh, this one has a lot of things that kind of uh, are pet peeves to me. Uh, like for one, you can't change your settings in game. And I know the physics aren't the best in this game when you're crashing. I'm hoping that Project Cars 2 improves on that. But I really love the uh, driving mechanics in this game. Gives it a lot more of a real feel. You know, if you shift wrong, it will make noise and do bad things to your car, like spin it out. Um, but yeah, this, this review isn't too much about the... Um, game however it's more about the shifter so i'm just going to finish this lap here and you guys can kind of observe me using the shifter i will try not to spill anymore i'm trying really hard not to crash here and it's also really hard to talk while i'm driving when i crash i kind of cut out talking because i'm not really sure how to talk and get myself out of an accident at the same time it's kind of easier if i just remain quiet it's an absolute amazing shifter. I don't have any reference points since this is the first shifter that I've used personally, but it just feels really nice to work with. If I work with it enough, someday I won't spill on this course. Uh, oh, I didn't turn that too bad, I guess. I actually hate this. Uh, Part of the course. There's another one coming up later in the North Leaf, but uh, I don't like the carousels on the course. They, they, the fact that they're like ramped inwards kind of uh, throws me off. The rest of the course I do like them. All right. And I'm not sure how much of the video you can see, but I am clutching with my left foot with the Logitech pedals that come with the Driving Force Wheel G902. See, that's what I love about this game. You can drift like that. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Yeah, I know you guys are going to scream at me in, com in the comments about my hand positioning. So, uh, just do me a favor and don't. I know it's bad. <laughs> but I'm not out here racing for time, I'm out here racing for fun. So I don't care too much. Oops, a little bit. supposed to be a drift. In real life, I probably would have just blown the engine. That's okay. That's why I like to race in this game, not in real life. Oops. I also love how the Ford uh, Mustang handles in this game, too. This is the Trans Am. The Boss also is nice to drive. But uh, the Mustang boss in this game, I find slides way too easily. I'm not sure if that's true of the real car, considering I've never driven a real Mustang boss. But um, in this game, literally every little thing you do can make it slide, and I don't really like that about it. 
and this is the final stretch of the course, so I'm probably going to be wrapping up the video here. Oops, I don't think the Mustang goes over to six. So, yeah, it looks like it's just fifth for this car. And so that's the other thing. I like that this thing goes to seventh because some cars do utilize seven gears. Um, nearly all of the cars in Project Cars 2 will remain in fifth or sixth, however. So most of the time I won't even be over those later gears. But it's nice that the shifter has them if there are cars that uh, you drive that do have them. All right. I did not mean to do that spin out, but that's okay because we're having fun. All right, so once I pass the finish line here, I'm probably going to wrap the video up. So, yeah, that's about it for this video. I, I highly recommend the shifter for anybody who's first time with their shifter or first time racing with the shifter to um, people who have experience. It just feels really, really quality. Uh, the knob is exchangeable, like I said earlier in the video, so if you wanted to get like a lower sitting knob or a knob that isn't a ball, but more of a, uh, a bat type of um, knob, you could do that. It stays really, really tight on this desk. There's no way it's coming off unless you're literally yanking the shifter, which isn't really necessary when you're driving. Uh, we'll probably never use a sequential plate, but it's really nice that they have it in there for people who do like to use it. But uh, yeah, that's about it for this review and uh, demonstration. So thank you guys for watching. Um, please like the video if you enjoyed it or, had, or felt that you learned something. Um, comment in the comment section if you guys have any questions. I try to look at all of them and answer them. And um, please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one or want to see more like them in the future. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.